I'm going to start. It's 10.01. Uh, so just to respect everyone's time. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in the sense that we didn't take the traditional consulting, you know, the, the path that a traditional consulting firm takes to grow. So instead of hiring a lot of consultants and then staffing them on projects, what we did instead was we tied up with a lot of subject matter experts from various boutique consulting firms uh, across the globe that allowed us to grow really quickly. So uh, we started in 2017. By the end of 2019, we were already about uh, 500 consultants. We delivered more than 200 consulting projects. Um, 2020, 2021 were supposed to be great years for us. Uh, you know, after the initial scale, we were supposed to scale up quite quickly. Uh, obviously, we all know how things turned out. Uh, it wasn't too bad, but um, one of the things we decided to do in 2020 was spend at least 20% of our time, any excess capacity that we had on interesting initiatives, which will help get things back on track for organizations. So for example, in, in, in 2020, uh, we started this project called the Superheroes Project, where we got about 700 business leaders from across the GCC to help small businesses and micro businesses get back on track. Uh, 2021, we started this summit called the Connected Insights Web Summit. So we've had uh, about 1,500, part 1,500 participants dial in on the first six days of the Connected Insights Web Summit. Today is day seven. Um, on day seven, we have, uh, today, uh, this is the first panel discussion. We have about five or six webinars and one workshop in the evening as well. Uh, so looking forward to seeing you all in some of the other webinars and web summit uh, or uh, discussions later today. Um, that's it from me. Uh, just one quick housekeeping point is around, uh, you know, we've made you all panelists rather than attendees. Uh, so while there is a formal panel with Mads and Sayer and uh, uh, Ahmed, uh, but uh, we've made you all panelists so that you can interact during the discussion uh, as well. So that's about it for me. I'll hand over to Mads uh, to start the discussion. Thank you so much, Varun. And uh, thank you for introducing the format. Uh, the format is like that, that I will short you give a little introduction to the subject, and then I'll pass over to Ahmed and uh, Sayed, and they will, uh, Ahmed and Sayed will tell a little about themselves because they are our panelists today. And they're very experienced in, in, in sales and sales leading, and also in two different industries. But before, before handing over to them and before uh, their introduction, I shortly want to, to uh, frame what we are heading for today. We are heading for how you actually develop sales uh, and how you lead a group of salespeople. And is there any necessary to talk about leading salespeople in the new world? And the new world, of course, is different. Because things that have happened that really has changed sales. And, uh, I'm so lucky to have been working with sales development for, for, for nearly 25 years. And for the last five, six years, I've been closely connected to a lot of researchers and scientists. And that's very interesting because normally we don't talk about sales as a scientific job, but sales has really changed and we need to know data, we need to know things. And when you ask sales leaders around the world, 68% of them expect the changes to come faster than they are now. That means nearly 70% of sales leaders, they expect that changes will be faster. And why then focus so much on leading salespeople? I'll give you three very short, three very interesting figures. The first of them, 56% of sales leaders consider their sales force as being efficient. That means that only a little more than half of the sales leaders see their sales team as being efficient. What is the problem can be different things, can be skills, it can be attitude, it can be tools, but that's pretty amazing because if you were a professional football coach or you were, uh, you were running a hospital, I don't think you would really be uh, proud of having only 56% feeling that, that they are feeling their force is efficient. Second is that 53% of salespeople around the world hit their target. That number has been decreasing since 2012. There can be several reasons. 
maybe targets are too high uh, or maybe we are doing sales wrong or maybe it's a combination but it's pretty interesting because I see it as the sales leader's most important responsibility to make sure that my salespeople perform. That's done by doing realistic targets, but also by developing, coaching them and leading them to reach their target. And then the last number. This is what I actually is a little worried about. Only 43% of sales leaders around the world believe that they have significantly developed their sales force the last 12 months. And that means, remember the first figure I gave you, 68% of sales leaders imagine that changes will come faster than now, but only 43% of them has significantly developed their sales force. That means there must be a lack. And with these short figures and small comments from my side, I know that sales is under a huge transformation and I'm totally sure that sales leadership has never been any more important than today because you have changes, you have pressure, customers' journey are changing, and a lot of things is changing around the world. And with these words, I'd like to welcome uh, Sayed and I welcome to uh, Ahmad uh, to welcome you both. And Sayed, to be uh, friendly to, to ladies first, I think I'll pass the word to you and let you introduce yourself and give us a little about your background and the challenges you see in your world of sales. So please, uh, thank welcome. you, Matt. Uh, thank you everyone for um, inviting me. Hello, everyone. My name is Sayad, and I have more than 15 years of experience in retail and hospitality, working with luxury and lifestyle brands, including Harvey Nichols, Fairmont Hotels and Resorts, Waldorf Astoria, Hilton, and now IHG where I'm currently in charge of the newly opened first boutique hotel in the United Arab Emirates, Hotel Indigo Dubai downtown. And of course, all of this comes with a vast experience in uh, leading sales and marketing teams. Um, that's why the role of the team is very, very crucial for me. As a leader, as a leader I always try to motivate my team as, as we know that leadership is not about the title or designation, but it's more about the impact, influence and inspiration. But if you ask me briefly, who, who are you? I'll just say that I'm crazy and I love it. Uh, but of course, in a positive uh, or a good meaning of this uh, word, because I'm uh, always on the lookout for um, interesting projects and collaborations. I absolutely love sharing ideas, brainstorming, and always try to surround myself with uh, like-minded people. So I'll be more than happy to share today my experience. And if I will be able to bring any value on today's sessions, I will be very, very happy. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. And I know that, that the business of, of uh, hotels and resort has definitely changed a lot also due to digitalization. And then over to you, Ahmad, and you are definitely also in a business that changed a lot over years. And uh, please introduce yourself and, and, and fetch you. All right. So uh, thank you, Matt, for inviting me for this uh, uh, lovely event. Uh, so my name is Ahmad Shamsuddin. Um, I have over 16 years of experience. Uh, all of it is, is in sales. Uh, like I tell everybody, I'm a salesman from day one till, till today, till the last day of my career. I'm going to continue to be a salesman. Uh, I've worked in multiple organizations in multiple uh, countries over the Middle East and North Africa. I worked in, in, in FedEx and in Thomson Reuters and some local companies and now at Thatcher. Uh, basically, like you said, Mads, yeah, I come uh, most significantly from the logistics industry, uh, which is... Uh, uh, which is fortunately enough one of the most developed uh, industries in in, uh, in the world, uh, especially thanks to COVID. I mean, uh, I think we we are we and and e-commerce are the only uh, are the only two industries in the world that would say thank you COVID for 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 helping us you know overachieve and go above and beyond. Uh, but like you said, everything comes with, with with a price. Everything has its own challenges. Uh, 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 the world is changing as we know it. Everything is changing, uh, and and you ha you have to adapt very quickly to those changes. Uh, because if you don't adapt, you're simply left behind, and, and there's somebody else that's gonna come and move much faster than you. Uh, uh, 
the digitalization represents a massive change in the way that things happen. Uh, we've been we've been suffering in the past in the past two years, 2020 and and 2021, to you know adapt to the changes that the sales process have have got into, uh, whether it is from the prospecting to the contacts to the meetings done to uh, to you know trying to adapt with the with the body language, trying to adapt with the icebreakers, trying to adapt with all that massive changes that have put uh, simply uh, a wall between you and the customer, which is that camera. Uh, and I look at it also from a different perspective, from a positive perspective that uh, this have created for us a, a wider zone of, of prospect customers. Uh, well, well, right now sitting in Dubai, we can connect with people all across the globe in, in the US and in Europe without uh, simply being awkward or without simply feeling that we're just doing this over 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 a video call and want to meet in person. So uh, you can look at it from both perspectives. It, it's always going to have its challenges, but it's about how you adapt. It's about how you use your data. It's about how how you analyze how the market is doing and and move move very quickly. Uh, I think I think it's. Uh, this era is, is the time of, of, you know, moving quickly and breaking things. It's not anymore uh, moving slowly, maturely, because the way everything is developing in a massive scale, in a very fast pace, you cannot anymore move movement slowly, maturely. You'll be left behind the, uh, simply. Okay, I like, I like uh, the, the, the perspective and the mindset of both of you. You see a lot of opportunities, you believe in things. And also that's what we really like from a sales organization. Somebody, whatever happens, whether it's COVID or something else, we expect that there is a possibility. Uh, of course, I know that every organization and every person has its challenges as well. Uh, just for your, all of you participating here, please feel free to engage with us ask any question, put them in the chat box or raise your hand that you want to say something and we will we'll address these questions to Sayat and, uh, and to Ahmad uh, so we can have a, a good interaction here. Please feel free to do that during the session. But let's start a, a, a place here where uh, I like, as I said, the positive mindset from both of you. But uh, we, have to, we have to see the fact that actually also COVID-19 has been a challenge. And then I would like to state, I mentioned in the beginning that only like 53% of salespeople are, heading, are hitting their target, meaning that a lot of salespeople don't hit them. And, and the job for a sales leader is definitely to, to motivate and engage. I would like to ask a question. Has it been more difficult to engage today than it used to be? Is it more difficult to motivate than it used to be, also because people are changing, young, young generations, to, uh, and, and old generations might not fit, Ahmad. These people successful five years ago, maybe they're not today because of speed. So how do you see that motivating and, and uh, engaging people? More difficult? All right. So, uh, 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 like I said, Mads, the the uh, basically the massive change that's happening right now is in simply the approach and the prospecting of the customers have totally changed. You, we we do not we do not do uh, cold calls anymore. Cold calls are much different right now. Cold calls are easily either through social media. Uh, either e either through uh, the social networking. So it's not easy anymore to do the cold calling process, which usually back at the day used to give us a big funnel of prospect pipeline where you go and do the, the normal sales, sales process. So the challenges right now is they have a bigger pool of prospects, but you have a lesser opportunity of converging those prospects into real customers uh, simply because of the... Uh, because of the challenges of the digital connections and the digital uh, engagement, and secondly, because of the massive competition that can come. So uh, uh, digitalization have created both ways. It, it, made, it made connections easier, but it also opened the door for a lot of competition. Right now, yes. somebody sitting all the way across in China can come and yes. compete with you in, in Dubai simply because of the digital world. So in order for you to keep doing what you do in a, in a very efficient manner, uh, you need to simply, I mean, the sales process is, is going to always be the same. The sales process is never going to change. It's going to be prospecting, uh, converging, meeting the customer and trying to uh, close the deal. Well, whatever changes in the middle is, is how the tactics and the go-to-market strategy changes. So whether it is, the way I look at it is, is basically you need to engage your salespeople 
uh, whether it is now or before, you need to engage them in the whole process of the sales. You need to engage them in the individual targets. You need to engage them with the company revenue targets and the growth plans that the company is, is, is looking forward to achieve. And from that, you can work backwards. So the way I do with it is I always put that target uh, discuss it individually and with the team and then we work backward on how we're gonna achieve that target whether it is by putting the kpis whether it is uh, looking where we need to go above and beyond whether it is we need to create and be creative about our services and products that will help us to to, to engage with the customers better and whether it is uh, you know engaging in social events and, and creating that uh, digital events that will help us uh, uh, reach reach more customers okay so yeah well, thank you, Ahmad. I think that he highlighted all the major challenges that we face nowadays. Um, from my side, I just wanted to add that managing the sales team is not an easy task. And you have the potential either to make or to break your sales team. Mm. And it's no brainer that motivated sales team enjoy their work more, interact more, and they do their work better, resulting in a healthier bottom line. So, but obviously achieving uh, this doesn't come with, you know, cracking jokes all the day or, you know, it comes with a specific um, actions, which I set for myself based on experience, which I will be sharing today as well. Uh, for instance, what I'm always trying to do is to focus on key sales activities instead of results, because focusing on sales results alone can be very, very stressful for the team, specifically that nowadays all the targets are stretched, that you have so much competition. So, and then considering that as a salesperson or as a sales manager alone, you cannot influence, but you can control the results. So um, that's why, again, we always focus on the action plans or basically like we have our target, we have our goal, but how are we going to achieve it? And itself, like developing these action plans and discussing brings more engagement within the sales team and brings more satisfaction once it is achieved. Okay, that's so that, yeah. the second thing, which I think is absolutely important nowadays, whatever the digitalization, whatever digitalization takes us or anything, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. And specifically that beside the same laptop and either it's online or offline, there will be a human being, a person that will be driving uh, these initiatives. So it's absolutely important to publicly display appreciation for that person that we know that most of the sales people, they're very ambitious because it's a name nature of their work, right? So um, we don't just celebrate a big milestones, but we also celebrate a small ones because once you do first step, it means that in your right direction. Then give specific compliments, just saying a simple thank you, you know, and then maybe doing some specific reward days when in front of the peers, you all share the achievements of that particular colleague. I think this is, this is still very, very essential. Then, um, you know, that's also very important to set a destination rather than a path, uh, because then you can show the destination, but you need to empower salesperson to go and do it on their own way, that they feel that empowerment, they feel this trust, and they know, okay, this is my goal, and I'm going to take or to use all tools available just to achieve this. I think this is also very important. Then just blurring the line between um, a leader and employer, promote the open door policy. It's such a simple things, you know, they big, they big a really, really bigger impact, specifically when, for example, you're joining a new team and then, or you are in charge of the bigger team, you know, the ecosystem within the team is very important. Then of course, transparency and honesty. As I said, we've been living in a very, very challenging time, specifically through our 2020. And then the transparent communication is absolutely essential. This relates to the, for example, management making a big decisions or implementing a new policy. So of course, some of the colleagues may agree with decision of the policy, but if, you manage to explain them the rationale behind this, either it's a positive or obviously we're talking about maybe some, some negative cases, then they're more likely to understand and respect it and support you within this initiative. Um, another thing which is, I think that um, is also essential is um, autonomy you know, uh, where we not only promote that you need to make specifically uh, the, the guest, the client happy, but also promote it within themselves. So um, the sales should 
focus shouldn't focus solely on the guest happiness but also each other happiness this will positively impact the whole team and then uh, um, I think that you know we always see that we know that the benefits money uh, it's it is important but we choose to work or not to work for the particular company not only for this and that's why if we promote a really very healthy and pleasant environment within the team for example as for me i always try to organize a lot of outings for the team of course again um with the COVID, uh, with the pandemic it was a bit difficult recently but whenever there is a chance then we always have an opportunity you know to go somewhere uh you know, besides the work and, you know, to engage, collaborate and absolutely like interact as, as, a, as a friends, as a team uh, when we're out of the work, which helps us to streamline the certain processes where we are on duty. Uh, and then uh, again, communicating goals, make them clear. I think it's a statement that's been discussed many, many times, but it's still absolutely important and essential to imply when the uh, sales team knows what the goal is and you set the clear goals and expectations, it's easier to achieve it. Okay, I, I, I really admire both of you because you have a mindset that is, in my opinion, what I call a really green and positive mindset. I like that so much, but honestly, all sales leaders has challenges. What do you see as some of the most difficult things to handle at the moment? Not, don't, don't talk about COVID because that's a generic problem for all of us. What is the most important or challenging thing to handle with your, your sales team? And Mads, there's also a question from... No, that's no problem. Fleming, let's have the question, please. Hello, my Welcome. name is Fleming. I'm from Dubai, or originally Denmark, but um, that's a long time ago. <laughs> nice to see you, <laughs> nice Fleming. Nice to see you too, Matt. Nice. Um, I've been here for three years. Uh, what we're working with is neuroplasticity. Uh, and I found that mm -hmm. here in Dubai, building relationship is the way forward. Using the ERP, the digitalization, that's what we've been doing in family-owned company. We've been doing working with Dubai Customs and Dubai Police and governmental entities. Dubai Customs saved 280 million, focusing on innovation and getting 18 endorsement from Genie. I, one of the things, neuroplasticity, uh, one of the things is actually setting what you said, Syed, setting the people up to win, have a crystal clear picture of the goals and talking presumptive language as you already done it. That's how the elite sports doing things so the crystal clear picture is not a KPI. It's just numbers. You need to set the team up. And I really love that you're doing a lot of different activities and so on. You're building, empowering, flexibility, creativity. The thing is that if you're familiar with the ladder of inter inference, uh, if you're familiar with that one, our assumptions is killing a lot of things. So if we don't stop, pause, and ask what if, then we just then our thinking is the biggest competitor. It's not our competitors out in the world, but it's our thinking standing in the way. And we only right. we only see ten percent of what's going on. And we had World War Three last year. As you can say, our our client right. is in the process of becoming all the time. So, and so your question here, that. Fleming. Well, I, I really like what you're addressing. What is the, 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 the point you want us to, uh, to The question to... is, how do you build business in Dubai? Because is it relationship? Ahmed told us before that the cold calling is no longer working. A lot of competitors are coming in. So how can we build relationship? And relationship, is, the, is this the way forward when we are focusing on Dubai? Or in general in the world? Well, there is no one specific rule that works 100% in all cases. Of course, it's a heavily depend on what is the nature of business you want to build, right? Because if your business is online, then as I always say, whenever you approach any case, first, you need to understand what the product is. After you look at the who is going to buy, who is my buyer, you know, um, what is my target? And only after that two exercises, you need to 
come down to the what I'm going to do to attract these customers and generate revenue for my business. Therefore, it depends really heavily of what you're going to do, what kind of business you will be setting, what are you going to sell? Is it something physical or are you selling some services? Or, uh, you know, uh, again, once we know exactly what is this, then based on this, you can build up a right strategy that will be specific for your product and for uh, your customers, right? Because I always say, I always train my team that guys don't try to bring everything from everywhere. That's not going to work anymore. You need to specifically to understand for whom, like, this product is for whom you're doing this, right? And then based on that, you will be using, selecting your channels for promotions, understanding your tactics, setting your strategies. So therefore, I have several questions to ask before I will be able to answer your questions. Okay. Yeah, Mads, maybe for a second, you can talk about your, uh, you know, relationship selling versus transactional selling yeah, as well. Yeah, I'll do that, but I, I just have to Sorry. have Amat here. Yep. So basically, uh, uh, Fleming in, 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 in Dubai and the UAE, uh, generally speaking, in the Arab market, uh, relationships are very important. I mean, whether it is a direct customer for you or not, relationships are very important because uh, we work in a, in, a, in a very vibrant uh, uh, economy uh, that basically connections matter a lot. So maybe you're meeting somebody today that doesn't, uh, in a matter of fact, you know, fit your product selling or fit your, your company profile, but you never know in the near future that this particular person might introduce you to a potential customer or not. So the way I look at it personally is that uh, uh, social networking and relationships are, are, are one of the key factors that will, will basically open doors for you uh, uh, to, you know, to lead the way through and to enter new markets and to, uh, go into new business lines and to help you basically understand more about the economy, understand more about the, how things are moving in the country itself and how do you need to adapt because uh, we, we're, we're always on social media, we're always on multiple platforms, but you cannot grasp that everything that's happening in, in, in Dubai, especially because it is such a vibrant economy that everything is changing, especially nowadays uh, uh, when you go about regulations, when you go about uh, about the, the government initiatives, there's an initiative every single day and every single week. So uh, uh, for me, uh, putting personal relationships is something very important that will open a lot of doors for you, uh, not necessarily direct doors for sales, but will connect you to a lot of uh, key stakeholders and some potential customers that you want to target at some point. I like, uh, I like your point about relationship. I'll just give a couple of comments and then I'll let you uh, comment on my comments here because uh, I like your point, Fleming. We talk about beliefs and if something, all of us have beliefs and assumptions and in some ways they are helping us to, to navigate. On the other hand, they are de definitely limiting us a lot. And uh, if there's a group of people that I have heard a lot of assumptions and beliefs from is salespeople. They have all the question, they have all the answers to the world, especially when they're succeeding and when they don't do. They know everything why they do it or want, why they do not. About relationship, I like to challenge that a little because we see in the world today that if you look upon sales, you could have two different directions of sales. You have one direction uh, on the one hand that you can call uh, selling is getting more transactional. That doesn't mean that we're not speaking with people, but the direct relation between one person and another changes to be relationship is something that is done in all touch points that the client meet the company. That means with you, Sayat, reception, check-in, uh, the cleaning, the, the housing uh, stuff, and with you, uh, Ahmad, it's both when I call the service center, I chat with them, I speak with a sales rep, but I don't, I interact with a lot of touch point. And these touch point, every time I need a relationship. Uh, and, and relationship is not something done with only one person because nobody of us go to a Starbucks and ask for, for a specific person to service us. We, we are serviced by the brand. And then on the other hand, you have very complicated sales. And honestly, very complicated sales is when we join up. That means we co-create. 
we go fetch her together with Amazon. We go, uh, we bring in Samsung, we bring in hotels, we bring people together. And then the product, the, we, we're not there to reach our own target. We are maybe even there to, to, to do something better for the world. And, and most sales still is done in a kind of solution or transactional selling. And honestly, uh, if I can get a cheaper, newer hotel a conference, or I can get a cheaper service for packaging, and and then I'm not only I'm not only keen about the person, I'm also keen about the app, the services, the chat function, that the the speed in your reaction to come back to me. So so relationship that has changed. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yep, hundred percent, uh, Mads. Uh, it is uh, the, the sales itself. The sales approach have changed. You're not selling anymore. You're you're a consultant. So it yes. changed a consultative uh, sales method where you you present an added value. You don't go and sell and pitch. You know your company, no. your services. Just like you know, I'm selling this phone. This phone does this and that. You go and basically listen to the customer. Listen to uh, what's the the problems. Listen to what are the challenges listen to where they where they are right now or where they want to be in the future and yes. according to what you listen and hear and the keywords that you understand from, from from that potential customer you start presenting an added value solution for each uh, pinpoint that you've you've made and yes. and that's simply because you need to add value you need to simply add yes. value you don't need to sell a product you need to add value to the customer and that's the way where you build a relationship with that customer but based on win-win based on trust and not based on on transaction that you know i want you to buy that cup of coffee from me but tomorrow yeah, if you exactly. find a cheaper one you'll go to the other store and keep moving on yes and that means the minute you don't add value you might be beaten by your competitor 100 percent. even that we like each other even that we have a relationship uh because relationship is also creating the value great uh, I like what you're saying, Ahmad. Great. Uh, Syed, what do you comment on this? Um, I think that people always buy or go for something that makes them feel better, right? Yes. So if you manage to bring this together with your services, if you make them feel better in a certain way, independent either they pay more or they pay less, they will come for it, you know, you're just creating the comfort. And then it is in the hat of the in the hand of the salesperson because he is in interaction with this customer, right? Directly. Probably he done his research, he already had maybe direct communication or tried to learn the behavior of the customer or preferences. But then again, this is this is what makes sense because we buy based on our emotional, um, how to say like emotional push, I would say. That's why um, sometimes uh, when we see some advertising on the street, et cetera, people say, oh, it's not ROI driven. You don't know how many leads you go, but you don't understand that it brings you this emotional connection. You become connected to the brand, yes. which I will be talking about this probably later because for me in my work, I, I adopt a marketing philosophy, which yes. is like sales and marketing work in the union to add more value and be more efficient. So this is where we go because the marketing create kind of like a buffer, the base, and then the sales team jumps in to for the stage two and stage three, right? So uh, I think that's uh, that's from, from my perspective, this is about it. It's about- I like what you're saying. I like what you're saying about the, the, the yes marketing and then bring it together. Let's talk a little about that because what I see today is we used to have uh, 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 part of the organization, normally a, a unit called, this is uh, sales. And uh, sales was yeah. somebody over there and they had to get all the income and then the rest of the organization spent all the money. Uh, and, and today we have to see that sales is no longer a department, it's a function. That means everybody in the organization is taking part of this, whether you call them marketing or service or you call them whatever, they're taking, they're taking part of the function. Uh, the function selling comes from everybody. Yeah, so basically sales is a part of the wider marketing mix nowadays, yes. right? 
So, and the reason for this change is just because of the consumer habits evolved that old sales techniques are not working anymore. So the most of the purchase processes nowadays happening online. For example, yes. I have some statistics. I can just go through this quickly. Is that 92% um, of buyers start with an information search. 53% of buyers find that going online and researching is superior to interacting with a salesperson. 75% of buyers depend on social network to learn about choosing the right vendor. And 90% of buyers won't take a cold call. So, you know, this all brings to the matter, to the situation when you need to uh, readjust your techniques and the way you do your business. That also means, uh, Syed, what you're saying, if, if you want to sell me something from your hotel, but my peer group tell me it's a bad place, you cannot sell me anything because I'm related to that group of people that say to me in, in, in the social media, don't go there, it was a bad experience. Uh, and you try to sell me, it's very difficult. It is impacting, yes, it is impacting heavily and not sometimes it is used as per the purpose, you know, exactly. nowadays it's different, but then <laughs> it creates an additional pressure for the salespeople because yes. that's why I said that we use marketing a lot because, for example, to create this positive attitude towards the property and the brand, you need yes. to heavily invest in brand awareness and in the PR um, activities, yes. right? And with this, together with all these PR activities, maybe publications, etc., you even sometimes our sales team takes it and goes to the uh, to the partners saying that, oh, wow, this is my brand. Look, we've been recently in the news and we initiated this and that, you know? And when you talk, I'm talking about the B2B now, when you speak, for the partner you see that it makes a direct impact because yes. what others think about your brand also creates a, some basis for that that person's uh, perception that company's perception about your business about your brand sure sure Mats, just to, con to comment on that, just from a different perspective, I think the, the solution for that, I mean, that is, the, 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 you know, the online media has become a challenge for everybody. One bad review can, can screw a big organization. Uh, the solution for that is to simply make everybody in that organization a brand ambassador. From, exactly. the, smallest, from, from the smallest employee to the CEO of the company, they are yes. all brand ambassadors that they represent the brand. Uh, whether they are at work, outside, everywhere, they do represent that brand in a certain way that creates a massive impact of awareness on, on not uh, your target audience only, but on the general social audience that, that surrounds each particular person. Uh, and and, and, th and that, that is basically something that's, that, that's becoming very, very important at our time. And I do, uh, I do uh, compliment what Syed said, that, uh, that everybody right now, just the first thing they do, if they see, if they see your logo, they just go on Google and type in your, your name and see who's there and, and, and what does this company do and how are the reviews looking like. Uh, so another thing that I want to divert a little bit into sales is that right now, what we as sales leaders are trying to uh, reflect to our salespeople is that the role itself is, is, is much bigger than just going and selling a product or going and achieving a number. We are trying to create awareness for our salespeople to brand themselves, to market themselves using, using social media because it, it, it became such an important tool. So right now we're, we're trying to motivate our salespeople to go write articles to go uh, put comments here and there and to brand themselves as as industry experts as as professional salespeople that that can add value to multiple verticals and that is a, a new direction that we are trying to go through to make you know to make things a little bit more easier and a little bit more friendly in terms yes. of of uh, uh, targeting also because when we talk about uh, sorry Syed. Yeah, I just wanted to pick up on one particular point that Ahmed mentioned with regards to making people brand ambassadors, which we you bring into the picture another very, very um, important element is that how you communicate, right? Because the sales mindset and their perception of the brand and who the customers may be different from what the marketing team probably thinking. So you need to make sure that your message is very, very clear, that both teams understand the brand positioning, uh, key USPs, 
And uh, obviously, whenever they communicate, they communicate one message, right? Uh, they communicate, so there is no um, uh, miscommunication in it. And you're not picking up from the business partners, which are B2B, absolutely different view and perspective on the business and the product itself. Rather when you're checking, for example, social media and you see absolutely different messages popping 100%. up from there. 100%. Yeah. So the, so the brand consistency here becomes very, very, very important. And I think we also talk about how do we create that uh, kind of passion for being in a company? Uh, because passion here definitely kills performance. Uh, if no passion, it's difficult to get the, the right performance. Uh, I think there's, there's another thing you, you're addressing here. That is uh, when we talk about leading uh, sales today, we don't only speak about leading the salespeople. We speak about uh, getting these brand ambassadors and uh, I remember I was part of a, a concept in, in a hotel in Denmark where we trained especially the housekeeping personnel as well. Because if they were smiling, uh, speaking to people friendly, people got a much better experience. They got a much better emotion and they will feel everything was good. But if they met a housekeeping person being uh, not uh, communicating or introvert or, or arrogant, they wouldn't have a good uh, experience. The same with the drivers of Fetcher. How do they actually approach people? Because the next time I'm going to order a Fetcher delivery and I had a bad experience with a driver, I go somewhere else. So, sure. so, so we need to have everything in, in mind here. Uh, sales is no longer just a one man's job. It's a team game and we have to change that. One, one thing I like to address to you as well, you had some absolutely amazing uh, percentage, uh, Sayad. I like to address to you that one of the most important things for sales leaders as well is that understand that a lot of sales is data driven. That means it's not longer just a matter of a salesman in his car with a bag and then he's driving around with a gut feeling in his stomach. Now it's also decision based on data, on good and bad. What do you think about that? More data, less good feeling. <laughs> Well, um, if I will be talking about our business in particular, which is hospitality, I know that the world became, became much more digital nowadays because it's been um, obviously reflected with the customer behavior and the overall the systems that we're working with. But in hospitality, whatever it is, still human touch is key right because people coming for experiences they come they still we are not in a stage when you come wear a vr glasses and visit the hotel and stay and have the same experiences people still physically need to experience it and interact with the live human beings and therefore for us it is still very crucial to pass our positive emotions like our hospitality to the guests that are visiting to make sure that they it, their experience is unforgettable because this is how we maintain uh, consistency in the services we provide is with the way we interact and we treat the guests that stay with us. So in terms of that, again, um, in, in our case, we always put a lot of pressure on training and development because it's absolutely crucial. I know that some of the systems have been already transferred into digital. For example, before you had to physically call if you wanted to book something in the hotel separately to the, to the restaurants or separately to the concierge. Nowadays, we have a platforms that able with the one QR code to manage all the systems. So basically this QR code is attached to your room. And whenever you go within the hotel, you can through your mobile device, so you can make an order, so you can buy uh, some accessories, you can write the comments, leave the feedbacks. So it is already digitalized in a certain way. However, when it comes to obviously, because in the way, in the places where you go within the hotel, you still meet people that represent the brand, right? So in that cases, they also, you know, um, you not only you will go to the social media to buy things, these people, when they speak with you, they can also equally sell you some services in a good manner. They just brief you, give you some information. They will direct, make sure that you have a good time while you stay in the hotel. So yeah, that's from, from the point of hospitality. Yeah. 
Yeah. How much? So, uh, uh, Matt, Matt, this is a imp very important topic that you just opened is that the yeah. data accessibility and the data used for, for the salespeople. And I think this is uh, one of the most crucial pillars for, for mm. the new sales generation, which is data. And it doesn't mean the old reports that we, you know, we used to extract from our ERP or the Excel sheets or, or all that or the CRM that we used to fill. It's much different right now. It's just simply I've worked in multiple organizations where we used advanced data uh, visualization uh, products like Tableau and Altrix and, and, and those forms. And, and the, the basically the purpose of this data visualization is to simply make each and every salesperson envision his performance, envision where does he stand every day from achieving his targets? What does his KPIs look like? What does his customer behavior look like? What is the customer spending right now looking like? Uh, and, and if there's a, a certain surge with a certain customer, if there's a certain dip in a certain customer's performance, uh, just a flag right there to tell to tell the sales, hey, you've got a customer that's dipping, you need to act on that right now, or you need a customer that's surging in, in, in terms of, of spending and you need to understand what's happening so you can build on that for cross-selling and overselling. And, and that's that's from one point of perspective. And you go as well to, to analyze the customer behavior to know your customer much better, whether it is from uh, understanding the customer behavior in terms of spending, in terms of challenges that they face through the year. And the third most important point is Basically, when you connect your CRM with that and you start basically understanding the uniqueness of your industry and uniqueness of your organization and what is what we call uh, uh, the, the, the industry best practices and your organization best practices to, you know, to, to go to a certain prospect pool, to go to a certain, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, conversion ratio. What is the co general conversion ratio that's looking like for your organization and, and what's going wrong and what's going right? So I think the, the data is basically what is, uh, that's the major factor that needs to be changed in each organization for them to be able to, you know, stay up and running and to compete within the, the, the market and all the advancements that's taking place in our day. Fleming, you have a question or a comment, please. Yeah, uh, actually, Ahmed took it out of my mouth <laughs> because <laughs> you can say that what he said is you can track customer behavior. You know, you can predict his next move, especially in the hotel business, just by tracking him. And Ahmed said all what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay, it's so important these yes. days. Yes, but you are you, you, in front of the client. So you cannot live without these data because that's the way you track it and you need to have all this information. But you talk also about Fleming about neuroplasticity and that's definitely like going to the to the brain fitness gym to, to, to train the brain all the time to new uh, roots of, of new habits. Uh, yes. And I think when, when we discuss this, uh, we discuss one of the topics that is seen as when you speak with sales managers, sales leaders around the world, they see that going back in old days, uh, the way they trained people was not very effective. Normally, they put them into a room for one day, they overloaded their brain, and then they went home to do exactly what they used to do. So I would like the sales leaders around the world see that top three topic to address in the coming years, and I think that's many years, that's how they train people, not only in sales technique or question technique, but also understanding data, using tools, because tools will change more rapidly. How do you see the, the, the most efficient way to train people, to, to develop them? Because uh, that is so important. What is the most efficient way, Sayat and, and Ahmed? I think nowadays, business is a live organism where you cannot separate one from another. And then in order to, for salesperson to understand it perfectly, you cannot just train them on the sales techniques and platforms. They need to understand business as a whole. That's what, what I think about it. And that's why you need to expose them to the different sides of the business. So when they consolidate their knowledge and information, they able to look to the potential business opportunities from the different sides. For example, within the hotel, the salesperson, if you just teach them how to sell the rooms or for example, food and beverage or other services, like they will be doing it from one sided. But if they understand the customer journey from A to Z, so how customer first searches and trying to find, how he books, 
how when we, he comes, who meets him, what we offer to him, for example, during check-in, because every particular step is a sales opportunity. This is how we consider it, right? Starting from the, for example, the journey starts from your search. So this is where you imply, for example, SEO and CM techniques when you make sure that you are up on the, in the line uh, with regards to the search results. Then they make a booking. Then the reservations team, which is also in particular, they also brief you on the information. They might at this stage also brief you on particular services and upsell to you, right? Then they reach the stage when they uh, check in, they are in the hotel, they have an interaction with the front office. When in the front office, again, there is a communication which has some potential for upselling in this stage. You know, like the different stages involves different uh, opportunities. And we also, even we were using the, some interesting exercise at the hotel, which we're calling revenue room, but at different stages, even once the, uh, for example, the person or the company already within the hotel, there is a certain techniques to upsell certain services. So um, that's why, again, um, in terms of that, or if the salesperson, has more uh, information and more exposed to the different uh, sides of the business, he will be able uh, to, to provide more, to see more opportunities and generate more business and leads uh, for, the, for, the, for the hotel, right? If we're talking about the hotel. And from the other side, of course, you always constantly uh, need to develop the salesperson on the certain platforms, certain techniques, certain approaches, you know, because um, we need to teach them to be agile. We need to teach them to be tech savvy. Because, um, for example, nowadays, most of the salespeople doing certain jobs through the sales force, and then they need to excel. Uh, we started to do a uh, hotel show rounds through Instagram, where we took over the Instagram of the tour operators. And we simply, while they were, for example, in different parts of the world, we were doing a show rounds through Instagram Live. You know, so therefore the salesperson need always to be ready for a change. You need to be able to take, to pick up new tools, to upgrade their knowledge, to upgrade their skills, and to be able constantly drive uh, leads for, for the business, because this is, this is their target. This is the nature of the business for them. I, I like what you're saying, because we need to get them ready to change all the time. And to do that, we need to change for them all the time, because that's how they learn that changes are normal. Uh, they get used to changes. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy, because most brains don't like changes. But if we do changes rapidly and constantly, you learn to accept that's how it is. Uh, you just need to adapt. You just need to be agile. Yeah. Nowadays, you need to be agile. You need to yeah. be fast. You need to have, you shouldn't be reactive. You should be proactive, always one step ahead. And then we have to accept that uh, I used, I used to, to, to use the phrase, uh, when, it's, when it's good enough uh, to go, then let it go. That means sometimes 80% is enough. You never know what is 100%. You need to take the chance because when you do a post on LinkedIn or when you send something, you can never hit 100% sure that it's the right thing. You need to do something and then expect sometimes you do a small mistake or fail. Well, sometimes when it comes to the crisis situation, however, I always think that every crisis is an opportunity. So most of the finance directors think that, okay, cutting sales and marketing budget is the, the best decision I can do. However, it's not about this, it's about ROI. If you can provide a justification for return of investment of your actions, then, in reverse, you need to spend more to drive, to, to let it move, you know, otherwise, if you don't do anything, you cut on the budget, um, you don't take any actions, your business is not going to grow, it's not going to perform. No. Uh, Amat, what, what do you talk about when you talk about developing people, training them? Uh, what do you see the best way to do it is? So basically, uh, training is very crucial. And for me, the way I always look at training is by being in the field with my sales team all the time, uh, simply because, like you said, first of all, you need to personalize that training. You can't just put a generic thought on, on everybody and, and assume that it's going to work uh, because each individual in your sales team has its own challenges, has its own struggles, and you need to train them accordingly to understand for them to, to perform better. So uh, basically... When, when coming to, 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 you know, what we call a strategic training, uh, I think 
uh, uh, Syed have just put it uh, put it uh, in, in a perfect manner is that you need to make the sales not a salesperson but a business uh, person where he uh, where he or she just looks at the organization and, and all where, whether it is the finance of things, whether it is the collection matters, whether it is the operation matters and, and how things uh, can be done and whether it is the marketing procedures as well. Uh, so you need to make that salesperson become a business consultant where he understands a 360 view of the whole of the entire uh, uh, company. And then uh, uh, they'll be much more efficient in terms of, of selling, not only just selling in terms of, of quantity of selling, but the quality of the sales that they do. And one of the new things that 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 has been recently been adapted in, in the sales is that commission schemes have been uh, changed from you know being paid on terms of revenue to change to being paid on terms of profit. So uh, nowadays we'll see a lot of organizations in my industry and in various industries that are basically focusing on. Uh, putting down a very solid commission scheme to the sales team, but based on the profits that they make, not on the total revenue. And that is trying to push the salespeople to, you know, create a quality sales, create a higher profit sales rather than just, you know, create create numbers with, with very shrinked uh, uh, profit margins. Uh, and, and to move to move to the third point of, of the uh, training for the future, I think just the data point is something that I really uh, uh, like to focus on is that you need to make your, your salespeople data oriented in terms of understanding data, in terms of collecting data, and in yes. terms of how to elaborate and, and, and read this data for them to make, uh, uh, to make much better actions and for them to be able to uh, present a much more intuitive solutions for their, for their customers. Fleming, you have a, sh a short question here in in, in the end, because we'll soon wrap up. Yes, no? uh, yeah. um, because what Syed is talking about is the business oriented, you can say front uh, line uh, person. I don't see that in the area yet. I don't see people are, people are not, my customer service when I go for hotels or whatever is still the same. Customer service is really lacking in the area. Yes. And as Mass said, we humans are patent seeking beings and we want to stay in patents who we think is working. So being agile could be a very large problem. Hmm. Definitely. So on, as a response to what you just said, I just want to invite you to our hotel. We'll be happy to host you here and hopefully change your um, uh, opinion with regards to the services. We we'll look forward to that. Thank you. So uh, before closing down, I want a very short answer from Ahmad and from Sayad about this question. If you should give the best advice to an upcoming sales leader, what is your best advice? Please make it short because we are a little lag of time. All Sayed. right, so, Sayed, please go. Um, finding your inner chief happiness officer, that would be my advice. Whether you're tracking leads, using your sell, uh, sales skills to raise ferns or teaching your team to the power of yes, uh, managing customer success, we should always take happiness into account. Thank you. Amar? Uh, uh, mine is to simply stay close to your sales team, roll your sleeves up and stay in the market. Don't just sit behind a big, big desk and, and look at things from, from a different perspective, but be in the field with your team. Get the understanding of how it feels to be a sales guy and just continue to learn about it and accordingly to help your team achieve because that's the goal that, that we always have at the end of the day. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you to all participants and thank you for some of you being very uh, active. That's amazing. Thank you for the comments in the chat. Sayat and uh, Ahmad, thank you so much for your time and your perspectives. And then I'll close with totally negative remarks like, did you know that 80%, 87% of people making decisions, they want to spend less time with sales reps. And only 3% of people making decisions trust a sales rep. So we have a big job to do and we are definitely ourselves. We have, we have brought ourselves in this position because we're taking sales too easy for years. Now we really need to step up. And with these closing comments, thank you to all of you and thank you for participating. Look forward to see you all and have a nice day around the world. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.